Welcome to the Four Belts here where we are doing workout from home number 48. We are still into our GPP, our general physical preparedness cycle before we reopen, which is why you may notice that things look a little bit different at the board. The board doesn't look like it normally does. Maybe it's in a new location. That's because things are changing here at the Four Belts, changing only for the better. So, today in our workout, it's pretty simple. We have got a nice upper body day where our strength focus is gonna be on dips and shoulder help. In our warm-up today, we're looking at three movements to help get our shoulders ready for dips. We are gonna look at the shoulder tap, a great exercise to look at shoulder stability, as well as anti-rotation and bracing through the midsection, through the core. From there, we're gonna look at shoulder circles. I love shoulder circles of all kinds. They really are a great barometer to let us know just how our shoulders are feeling during that day. And last but not least, in my opinion, one of the most important exercises and mobility drills to do before dips, which is the tabletop, as it looks at shoulder extension, our ability to get our arm behind us, before we come into a dip position today. So we're gonna do some shoulder taps, some shoulder circles, and some tabletops. We're doing those for three rounds today, and let's spend a little bit of time looking at all of those movements. For the warm-up, three movements today. We're looking at shoulder taps, 10 slow and 10 fast. As we know from shoulder taps, we've done them a whole bunch during our COVID lockdown times. We are looking to make sure we work on anti-rotation. So I'm going to be in a plank, a little bit wider than normal in my stance, and I'm going to take a full second to pause. So pause for a second, nine, eight. And once I've done 10 slow, 10 fast. From there, we're going to get into all manner of shoulder circles. So it's really about finding ones that feel good for you or ones you enjoy. You can do simple things like just simple double shoulder circles backwards, shoulder circles forwards. You can go one forwards, one backwards. You can switch that direction. You can go one across and one back. And of course, the same on the other side. You can draw infinity symbols with your shoulders. And of course, going the other direction. Tons of different ways you can do shoulder circles. All you've got to do is pick one and do it for 30 seconds. Simple as that. Last but not least, the tabletop. One of my favorite movements. On one of our four out of five rides to bed yoga, I'm gonna have the feet out in front of me in an L-sit. And when it comes, <coughs> excuse me, to hand position, you wanna let the hands forwards, to the side, pointing back, you get to decide. Decide which hand position feels best for you and play around with it over the three sets. Hands by the bum, we press into the floor, hips up to the ceiling, tabletop position, bum comes down and through, and we come up into our tabletop for 10 reps. 10 and 10 shoulder taps, 30 seconds of shoulder circles, I almost forgot for a second, 10 tabletops, we're doing that for three rounds in the warm up today. This rec piece for workout 48, we are looking at dips of all varieties, depending on where you are, and we are looking at some extra shoulder health work in there as well. So we're going to do five sets. Each set is three minutes long, split into two 90 second windows of time. So the idea is in my first 90 seconds, I've got 90 seconds to do 10 dips, which is plenty of time. You've got nine seconds for every single rep to get it done, which is tons of time. But really what I want to be thinking about is as I go through those five sets, is how can I make the intensity of my dip a little bit more challenging? So we're going to talk about how to do that before we start today and talk about some different scaling options that you can use when working on your adventures to get in your first body weight dip, or if you have a body weight dip, how to make it harder as well. From there, in our second 90 seconds, 45 seconds of that 90 seconds, half of it, is gonna be doing band pull parts. So I love band pull parts. I use them a lot for the power lifters. I train in personal training. And the idea behind it really is to try and make sure that our scapular retractors, the muscles behind us and the rear delts get nice and strong to help us with, a, with our postural position and in turn, our shoulder health. So let's just spend a little bit of time talking about strategies and how we should be approaching the strength piece today. So when it comes to dips today, most importantly is working out what am I going to do dips on first of all. Am I using some dip bars because I'm very lucky? Am I using two dining room chairs which I've got my hands on? 
Am I on a bench or a stair or a step or a box? Whatever it happens to be, we just gotta realize that whatever object we're using is gonna affect how the shoulders feel. So if I'm on something where my body can move in between it, so dip bars, two chairs, you're gonna find to be a nicer shoulder position because my arms aren't gonna be behind me like they would be if I was on a stair or a box. So always pay attention to how the front of the shoulder and the pecs are feeling when you're doing your dips. If it doesn't feel nice, see if you can find a way to adjust those hands into a different setup position. When it comes to doing dips today, we're looking to do 10, and we have a little progress for people who are trying to get their first body weight dip. We've been using it for, well, since the gym started three years ago, I've been using it as a coach for about 12 years now, and it's very simple, and it works fantastically well. All you have to do is actively find ways to make dips more challenging for yourself. So, to start off with, we'll go through those progressions very quickly, I think it's like four or five. I start with the hands at about hip, by the hips. From here, when I start with my dips, I'm going to try and use the legs to take as much body weight out of the situation as possible. I'm going to come down, shoulders below the elbows, and press back up. If that's easy for 10, I should be now thinking about moving the feet forwards, and ideally, if I can, getting those legs so the legs are straight. Again, coming down into a dip. From there, if we do that for 10, and that's not too bad, I should be thinking about elevating the feet. So I don't need to have the box or the thing my feet are on is super high, but maybe just a little bit lower than the hands. And again, if that's easy for 10, then I should be thinking of getting a friend to add some weight onto my lap. What I find with people, that once we get to a point where generally, and I'm speaking generally, in the gym we use a 45 pound plate and a 25 pound plate, so that's about 70 pounds. Once to the point where people can do dips with their feet on a box with about 70 pounds, Usually, not 100% of the time, but I'd say 90% of the time, once they've got to that significant amount of weight on their lap, their shoulders are strong enough that we can turn around and we can start working on body weight dips. So pretty simple, knees bent, legs straight, feet on a box, feet on a box with some weight added. Use that progression to work towards your first body weight dip. And of course, if you've already got body weight dips today, you should be looking at thinking of adding weight that could be by squeezing a dumbbell in between your thighs, always awkward, or the more expensive version, which is by a weight belt, or the cheaper version, which is get a piece of rope and tie some weights around your waist from there. Either way, 10 dips is the aim of the game today. Band pull aparts, pretty straightforward. You take a band, you pull it apart. The idea behind that is to make sure that when we are pulling our band apart, we are working on, sorry, I'm talking about my shoulder, the scapular retractor. So I'm trying to squeeze my shoulder blades together and squeeze the, all the musculature in between the shoulder blades and the rear delts at the back of the shoulder. What I find a lot is with a lot of people, everyone is very upper trap dominant. Why is that the case? Very quick talk about posture. If I am sitting like this with a slight position of internal rotation all day long, obviously I'm exaggerating, then what we're gonna find is that because my posture isn't very good, my traps sink, my arm is trying to fall off. So my traps then overactivate to try and keep that shoulder in a good position, which is why people get very, very tight traps, but these do a lot of tension through the neck and can lead to tension headaches. So what I wanna think about when I'm doing my band pull apart is I'm not really the kind of person who enforces like shoulders back down packed, but what I wanna avoid is doing my band pull apart and slowly shrugging the shoulders up. I'm trying to make sure the shoulders stay, the shoulder blades stay depressed, so pull down as I do my band pull apart. So if I grab my band, if you've got one of these guys, which is basically a big circle, you can either double band it, which I'm gonna do right now, or you can single band it, the choice is yours. Hand should be approximately where I do my bench press or where I do my push-ups. So somewhere around the shoulder width. I do not wanna have a floppy, dongly band. There should be some tension when the hands are set up. From here, I pull the hands apart, and that band should come to pretty much about zipple height, pretty much where the bar would touch when I bench press, where my chest touches the floor when I do push-ups. And we're gonna do 45 seconds straight of band pull aparts without shrugging the shoulders up. And that's the plan for band pull aparts. For the conditioning piece, we have a 15 minute workout. Well, technically it's really a sneaky 14 minute workout. I already gave, already gave you a discount. You're welcome from me to you. We are looking at three one minute rounds that we are gonna repeat five times in our conditioning piece today. 
So in our first one minute station, we are gonna do bear crawls. So with the bear crawl, we're gonna go over how it should be done, a nice little contralateral crawling pattern, as well as how to approach it if you're in a small space. From there, we're gonna look at a movement which is a dumbbell complex. So often called the man maker, we like to call them human makers, people builders, bitch builders, we call them all kinds of things here at the four bells, but the idea is it is a complex, a full body complex that uses dumbbells. So we're gonna go over how the human maker works. And last but not least, resting. You shouldn't need any coaching on how to rest. It's quite simple. You stand up, breathe, try and recover, get back to business. Once we are done that one round, we're repeating it four more times. The idea today, if we can, is to be as consistent as possible in our pacing. It's been a theme this week. Can I move continuously in the bear crawls? In the man makers, there's a lot of movements that goes into one complex, but I should still be paying attention to how many reps I am doing when I do my man maker, or human maker, or people builder, whatever you want to call it. So let's spend some time talking about those movements. With the bear crawl, what we're looking at is contralateral locomotion, which is a very fancy way of saying opposite hand, an opposite leg moves when we do some kind of crawl, but it's okay if you're thinking, well, that seems confusing because you do that when you walk anyway. Moving opposite hand, opposite leg, I hope you enjoy my walking, you're welcome. When it comes to the bear crawl, there's many different types of bear crawl. If you type bear crawl into YouTube, prepare to be bored for many hours as people show you different variations. Really what I want you to focus on today is constant movement. Most importantly, making sure we move consistently throughout the minute but also I want to think of making sure that I have the position that works best for me. So some people we find are high bear crawlers, their butt likes to stick up in the air. Some people are low bear crawlers, knees hover just off the ground. So either way, all I need to think about is what space do I have? Do I have like a long basement that I can do bear crawls in? Am I lucky enough to be in the gym where I can go up and down? Or am I in a very small space where I'm just going to do a couple of crawls and go forwards and backwards pretty quickly? So let's talk about the two different types of bear crawl we have. High bear crawlers are people that usually have the back legs straight and the bar in the air. So that means bar, I'm going to move opposite head, opposite leg, as I do my bear crawl. Low bear crawlers, I'm just going to go backwards just for the ease of the cameraman, is going to be someone who does their bear crawl, but the knees are just off the floor. style works best for you. Either way, we are going to do a bear crawls forwards and backwards in a circle, sideways, however you want to do them, but we are doing them for one minute straight. The human maker, man maker, people builder is a movement which is known as a complex, which means multiple movements back to back that make up one rep. So, in a human maker, Let's go through the movements we have to do. We have to start with the dumbbells by the hips. People always ask me why. It will make sense in just a minute. From here, I'm gonna start by dumbbells on the floor, shoot out into a plank, row, row, push up, could be done on the knees. Jump the feet in, nice position. I do a little hinge, dumbbells to the shoulder, I squat, and push press. From here, I come from the shoulders back to the hips and start again. Let's go through that one more time together. Dumbbells down, make sure the hands are in a good shoulder width position. We don't have one dumbbell over here. From there, feet shoot back, nice plank position. It's a row and a row, trying to minimize the hip wiggle. Push ups could be done on the knees if they need to be. Back up into the plank. Jump the feet in, making sure the back is grounded as we stand up. From here, a little hip hinge to the shoulder. From there, we do a nice front squat into a push press to the shoulders and back down. We're going to do one of that complex, that human maker, well, as many as possible of those, I suppose, in one minute. So, the conditioning piece today, pretty straightforward, 15 minutes. Minute of bear crawling forwards and back, minute of human makers, one minute of rest, five times for 15, but secretly actually 14 minutes. Good luck, let us know how you get on.